Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Casting Corner. For actors to help them learn about the casting process, talk to different casting directors, likes and don't likes, how they were in their office, and get to know the people behind the camera. We're people. <laughs> They're people. This is a person, it's real. <laughs> the casting people as people, not just like casting, ugh, dread it. Okay, so I'm here with the lovely Caitlin Well and Jen Presser. They both are on some amazing projects. Um, <laughs> IMDb them both. Say hi guys. Hi. They are both casting directors, they're partners, and they have their own company that they started uh, a, year a year ago. ago. Exactly. A year ago, exactly. Presser Well mm -hmm. Casting. Presser Well Casting, and they're already doing some amazing stuff. I've been in for them a few times. They've got mm -hmm. some really great movies. They work out of a production company office, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and you guys do mostly their stuff, or do you do... We do a bit, a bit of everything. Right. I like to say we have a unofficial, non-exclusive in-house consulting deal. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. that's gotta be the best you could have yeah. because yeah. you can do all their projects plus anyone exactly. else's. So they tend yeah. to come to us yeah. first, you know, especially in the kind of the earlier development phases. Mm -hmm. If it's shooting in LA, you know, we yeah. cast our first movie. We're consulting on a couple others that are gonna go soon, uh, but they're very supportive when we do all kinds of stuff. Awesome, yeah. that's so cool. Let's talk a little bit about just your background, where yeah. you're from, where you grew up, this where you're- like Dating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the first date, guys. Hey, I, I got a double date. Yeah, no, like, where are you from? How you got into casting and kind of your, like, casting history that got you to here. Sure. Okay. I'll do yours. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm from Denver, uh, born and raised, and then I moved to Nashville when I was 18. So, I'm a Southerner at heart. And then I went to Middle Tennessee State University, graduated, mm -hmm. and did a bunch of internships throughout college. Um, knew nothing about casting at all. Never wanted to be an actor. Um, I thought I was going to be a producer. Uh -huh. And then right when I was graduating college, uh, a friend of mine who was a PA in town was like, hey, they're shooting a movie here. You should send in your resume. And so I sent it in, and it was the Hannah Montana movie. So that's my very first credit. What? Yeah, so that's me so and Miley, cool. each other oh, like to fame. Yeah, like I have a bunch that. of Miley, like, Hannah Montana sign <laughs> stuff, and I have, like, shoes from the actual <laughs> shoot. And, like, I like because we were there, we got to keep so many props and oh my random God. stuff. So. Um, sell some of that stuff on eBay. I know. <laughs> right? Why do I keep it? For oh, like, no, yeah, you keep, know, like keep 20 years it. down the road. Yeah. It was fun. It was, it, I mean, it was when, in her Hannah Montana days. So yeah, yeah. she was just kind of like, just, I mean, gosh, I think she may have been like 18. I can't even remember how old she was. But we would go, because that was still when the South, like the local casting had to do both extras and principals together. So I started in extras and I was in an office with like all the other assistants were dudes. And so, like, they just kind of needed some more, like, so I kind of, like, transitioned up to helping with, a little bit with principals. Oh, this is in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you started getting yeah. Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. And then I... She was up for the PA job or the casting job? Yeah. 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 And got casting, and that's when, that was Seems my short. first exposure, and I had two bosses on that, and then they ended up taking me on to, like, all their other projects, and so I worked in the South for about three and a half years before moving here, and I worked in St. Louis... Nashville, Mississippi, Atlanta, New Orleans, New York for a very short stint, and I realized very quickly I didn't want to live there, so I ended up going back. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, my last thing I was working on there was Vampire Diaries, <gasps> and I worked on the first I two love seasons. Vampire Diaries. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I she love also it. did things like The Help and yeah, yeah. Up in the Air. Oh up in the Air. Yeah. yeah. So, so you did like all the local casting. Stuff. Yes. Um, yes. And right. then even for The Help, I was Emma Stone's driving double because. Um, it was a they, only had, they had one hero Fun car fact. so anytime you watch the opening sequence of the help that's actually me driving the car <laughs> what yeah. I'm gonna rewatch that and everybody rewatch that right now I actually have a picture of me like in the whole get because I had to get wigged up and oh I wore God, all her I costumes and so I have like these pictures and it was bummed because I, we were actually in the trailer together and we're like we should take a picture next to each other but then I ended up getting called really quickly, and so I ended up having to run out of the trailer, and then by the time I was done for the day, she was gone, so. Aw, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. so nice. Yeah. So, so nice. Yeah, very down to earth. She'll talk to anybody. She's That's very so warm cool. and engaging. What made you come to LA? Um, so I was working on Vampire Diaries. It was shot in Atlanta, and I did not like Atlanta. I didn't mm -hmm. like living there, so um, at the time, my boss and I had kind of come up with an agreement that I could do just all the extras from Nashville, because it was all done via email and phone. And then halfway through the season, they just kind of said, we want somebody local. And I was like, I'm not willing to move to Atlanta. And nothing was really happening in Tennessee. So I was like, you know what? I haven't tried LA yet. So I literally, and I tend to make like rash decisions. I don't think too. things through a lot. Very impulsive. So I literally yeah. like sold everything and packed up my car in two weeks. I drove out here and I didn't know anybody, didn't have any connections, nothing. And wow. Like true, like Hollywood Yeah. Story. Yeah. And I was like a PA here for a friend who does commercials for like a year. I did go back to Nashville, actually, because they, the very first year I moved here, they were shooting the show Nashville, oh, the yeah. pilot shot, and so, uh, and then it got picked up, so I went back, 
and I was the extras casting director for the first like three episodes of the show just to kind of like get back into casting a little bit and then I came back here and then a couple months after that I got my first job in casting out here. I started actually my very first job was with Lorraine Mayfield and then I worked for Marsha Ross who is my everything. Oh, she awesome. is my mentor. Every, like, she, I love her. She was head of Disney for 16 years. Oh, wow. Okay. And then she decided after she was done with that, she wanted to try independent casting. So she went independent for about three to five years. Mm-hmm. So I was in and out with her. Um, while she was independent. While she was independent. And she's kind of why I stayed in this. And she taught me pretty much like kind of the foundation of everything I do for casting now. So yeah, I was on and off with her for two, three years. And in between her job, she would set me up with her friends. So I worked, I did a show with Susan Blue and Jason Kennedy for a little uh, bit okay. for one summer and then I did some commercials with Justine Baddeley and Kim Davis Wagner oh, so yeah and then and that's when I realized I didn't want to do commercials um, <laughs> ah, that's a whole other beast yeah, yeah whole other beast <laughs> uh, <laughs> so after that I went to Sheila Jaffe for a year oh cool did a couple movies with her and then I took a little break and backpacked through Europe. And then when I came back, Marsha actually hooked me up with Kathy Sandridge, who I was with for three years before yes. we partnered. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she gave me my first casting director credit and got my first Ardios nomination. <laughs> Were you and... an associate with, with uh, Marsha? Yes. So I actually, because of my experience in the South, I you came to LA associate? and I was associate starting. I never was an assistant. Nice. Yet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting when yeah. I see the assistants coming up. Cause I've never right. done that. So I don't. Right, right quite get it sometimes but yeah cool yeah okay, and so now you're here caitlin nice <laughs> story oh god uh where do i start what's the question i was born on a <laughs> warm winter day june 6 1997 97 is generous but thank you i'm not going below 94 <laughs> are you from new york no from connecticut oh yeah so i'm an east coast at heart i went to syracuse and i studied film and television there but I minored in acting, and so I like to tell actors that I, I do have an acting background because I can sympathize. I can relate to you guys. Yeah. Uh, so Me when too, I, a little bit. So I moved out to uh, L.A. right after I graduated. And, like, I'd done internships in New York and L.A. L.A. seemed like the place to be. Uh, just more creativity and the kind of stuff I wanted to do. And so I moved out here, and I had probably seven part-time jobs. Um, everything from, like, wow. you know working at the kids club at LA Fitness it's like <laughs> you know babysitting doing that kind of stuff oh god catering like I've done extra work okay <laughs> to working at a nightclub you know my club kid days <laughs> working um, working the where oh bottle service ooh what yeah, yeah. you were one of the bottle I service had, girls I had my corset and everything oh um, my god maybe you were a if I girl if I could <laughs> So I did bottle service, did the whole thing. I was like loosely acting right. when I was doing all okay. these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment, but didn't know what part of entertainment. Right. And so again, I've been doing these internships, and I was like, development's kind of slow. Um, Super slow. I felt like <laughs> just reading scripts. So again, very slowly was figuring out what I wanted to do, and so I dabbled in acting for like a minute. Wait, can I find you on anything? Are you, were, you, were you on anything? Not that I'm going to tell you, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. going to find it. <laughs> Uh, no, so again, I know how hard it is to get an agent. I know how, right, like, what do yeah. I wear to an audition? Like, I, I can sympathize. So I think I'm actually better at my job now because I because had that you, experience. Yeah. I was working in a nightclub and I met this guy who I'm not with anymore, but I fell in love and I was like, I don't want to be working until four o'clock in the morning. Like, I just, my personality, I think, was suited for a real job. Yeah, a nine to five. <laughs> nine to nine. Yeah. <laughs> for everyone, it's their own journey and you kind of have to have that moment for yourself. And so I just kind of had this epiphany and I'm interested in casting, but what's casting? Like you can't, no one teaches casting, you can't learn casting, you don't know that that's a job yeah. when you're growing up. And so... Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, I got an internship with like Alyssa Weisberg and I was like, oh, I think I like this. Okay, this is, I mean, I'm intrigued enough, like, okay, I want to pursue this. Uh, and then through like a Syracuse alumni, Terry Taylor, I got a job with Ronna Crest. Oh my God. And that's how I got my first assistant job. And like, she was willing to sort of train someone who didn't have it that much experience. Right. Uh, so I kind of lucked out cause I went straight to features, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had Baz Luhrmann calling and yeah, so yeah, no, kind of, is like a lot of really big things. Yeah. So I did that for about a year and then worked at, uh, uh, again, the highlights was like Warner brothers at Warner brothers casting, like feature casting. Yeah. With Laura Kennedy and Chris Carlson, yeah. So I, that's how I became an associate. So I did the studio thing for four years. Then I moved to Australia for a year. What? Yep. <laughs> moved for love. What? But I worked in casting. You worked in casting there? Yeah. So I worked on like Neighbors, did some indies. Uh, so I, yeah, it was a soft spot for Australians. Uh, so I did that. <laughs> you can't see her. She's Australian. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> um, and still was working in casting. Uh, came back. We worked for John Papazera for three years. 
Um, but again, like the little things. I worked on the Amblin lot. And I did this um, this fun movie that never got made, but oh. it was a great job. Yeah. Uh, you know. So again, there's little things along the way that I'm kind of skipping over, but. Those are the those are the highlights. Cool, 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 cool. Like, I have so many. <laughs> so, many buttons. so many What are like some things that you have picked up? Some things that you learned to do, not to do. Things that you like, things that you don't like. This is not for you guys. This is, <laughs> this is purely selfish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still gonna post it. You guys need to see it. It's all for me. I guess like it's interesting because I do think I have just a little bit more of like independent casting experience than Caitlin does, yeah. but. And so it's always interesting, especially when I was an associate, like to go into each office and you'd have to adapt to right. whatever their systems were, whatever they, whatever their choices were. Um, and I think, again, like Marsha gave me such a great foundation of knowing, like to trust my gut when it came to taste and actors and if I thought they were good or not. And she gave me the freedom to really like be vocal about that, um, which has been amazing. Um, and it kind of really kind of just made me, I guess, grow in my confidence and like know that whenever I went to my next job, not be super vocal, but you know, like to yeah. like, give your opinion and to right. like make sure that like you are on the same page as your right. boss so that, you know, you know you're in the right office. Sheila really let me kind of run with things and um, gave me the freedom to run my own sessions and choose who I wanted to bring in. And so she gave me that ability of like just knowing how to like kind of run right. those alone right, right, right. with no, nobody standing over your shoulder saying, yes, yeah. I agree or no, I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, because yeah. there are some bosses that are like that. They're very particular yeah. about yeah. who comes in and yeah. they yeah, might yeah. manage that. But yeah, and then yeah. Kathy like really like just helped me. Um, again, she got me to a level of like, oh, I can be a casting director. Like I was with her for three years and every year she'd give me more. And right. and then to the point where I was able to like pretty much run a show by myself. And yeah. and I mean, to her detriment, then she lost me. But <laughs> 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 She's with Amanda Mackey in New York. Right. Um, but okay. they kind of do projects separately. They'll help each other if they need to, gotcha, coast gotcha. to coast, but they kind of like whoever's it, on the project there yeah. kind of just does, does it. Yeah. yeah. And it's cool because it, honestly, like especially like partner wise, like I got to work in a lot of offices with partners. And it's interesting to see that dynamic, which then helped me to understand what I would want in a partner. And, like, um, I have said it before, I and I will say it partner. again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, I would only ever partner with her. Like, I don't think oh. there's anybody else I would. And, like, it's a longer story. But we have been friends for a really long time, so it's like we knew at least we had that foundation to, like, at least build yeah. something on. Yeah. Because I just don't think I could ever just partner mm -hmm. with just somebody who just happened to be in casting. Right. Yeah. I just, I don't have that in me. How did you guys meet? <laughs> Through a work friend, actually. Yeah. So yeah. her intern was my ended up being my assistant. Our bosses were friends. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then after, like, a little bit after that, I had an intern who wanted to get more into the studio side. And so I, we ended, I asked this other girl who she wouldn't mind doing drinks with her so that because I didn't know anything about studio life. And so we all went to drinks, and she's like, hey, can I bring Kayla and this girl who works in my office? And I was like, sure. Yeah. So we ended up literally, like, yeah. at the den on Sunset. And it's a little booth, and her and I just talked all night. Oh, <laughs> Where did you nice. from? Yeah similar to what Jen said, but I think taste is all we have in this business. Like that's so important to our jobs because um, it's subjective. Right. Rana really, like she trained me. Like she was, you know, she's old school in a good way, but I wasn't using breakdown. I was, you know, handwriting all the appointments and uh. like check, cross check. Like I learned the old school casting way. And so she really trained me in that, uh, which again, kind of set that foundation. This whole business is networking, right place, right time eventually got the job at Warner Brothers. That was like an invaluable experience. You know, it's a dream job, like working at the studio and, and Laura believed in me and she made me an associate. And so again, that changed the course of my career and that next step. Um, but even going to, by the time I moved to Australia four years later, you know, you can have a love-hate relationship with the industry. <laughs> and that going to Australia and being like, do I want to stay in casting? I don't know. And then I started working with this woman, Thea McLeod, who was such a mentor and she's like family to me and just reminded me that like, oh, I am good at what I do and I, I like this and I care and at the studio level it's amazing but it's also do you want Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio and I kind of missed my favorite part of the job was being in the room and so going to Australia you know if you cast someone on Neighbors you know it's like their first job like it means the world to them and right. I, I felt like it was making a difference in, in actors lives which sounds so cheesy but no. it, was like, it was more fulfilling. It is. That like, is. I mean, like, literally every like, Australian actor that's, like... They've all been. They've all been on Neighbors. <laughs> that kind of reinvigorated my passion for casting. Uh, and so when I came back, I'm skipping over a couple of things, but I started working for John Papsadera, and he really let me run with things. He really kind of empowers you. Once he trusts you, he really, he lets you run with it. But, oh, learn television, too, is the main thing, because I mainly worked in features. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so and this then... was kind of my perfect foray into TV and film. 
uh, and you know, getting having the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. And he was very supportive of the opportunity to work with Jen. We hadn't worked in the same office, but we had a similar taste. Like we did a short film together. And so going back to what I was saying in the beginning, it's all about taste. And yeah. so we realized we had similar taste in actors. And that, again, was a great basis for a partnership because otherwise yeah. it'd, be, right. it'd be rough. Yeah. Right. So I learned that from some of like, the pedigree. Like right. I had a very, very... Now you guys have both pedigree. really good pedigrees. <laughs> when I would ask, you know, yeah. my old bosses for advice about what, you know, job to take next, that was the advice, right, right. That, was the advice that they all gave me. Do you want to stay? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm not uh, saying in your pedigree. Do so you guys turn down jobs that. often? As associates? Or like no, no, as, no, like... as now... You. Oh, now. So it was an interesting, like, start, I'll say. Like, it's, yeah. um, because at the beginning, it's like, you just, you it's so it. hard to make the jump from associate to directors because right. it's all relationship based. Yeah. And we started, we both started out and said, like, we, we're not out to, like, take jobs from other people. We want to, like, just find up and coming filmmakers and people There's that enough need work for somebody. everyone. Right. Um, but yeah, so, like, at first, I would say, like, last, if you cut to a year ago, like, we were pretty open. But Stampede was really great to us, and they gave us our very first movie, which kind of just got us in the door. And like that, that pedigree of just having Greg Silverman, you know, his production company trust in us to cast their first movie. That really changed our. I think people yeah. started to be. Oh, great. They took us a little bit more seriously. It, it kind right. of gave us a legitimacy. Right. Yeah. You know, like having yeah. this amazing office in the heart of West Hollywood, and so that. I, yeah, I, we're very grateful for yeah. Yeah. for that. Yeah. But uh, you yeah, know, we did turn down stuff, and yeah. it's not because it's not unlike being an actor that you do. Yeah, you have to kind of curate your... And we didn't want to say yes to every horror script mm-hmm. that came our way. Because you don't want to be like the horror. You don't want to get, yeah. get, get pigeonholed into no. it. It's like typecast. So you guys both touched on taste. <laughs> your taste. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about your taste. <laughs> this might get me in trouble with your viewers. <laughs> Everyone still wants movie stars for their, you know, right. for the TV kind of thing. I use the word gentle laugh, but classy a lot. <laughs> Um, I'll be like, that's a classy choice, you know? <laughs> like, even if you're doing, even when I was doing, like, a crackle show, we still wanted it to feel more like The Wire than Blue Bloods. And so, again, just in general, I feel like there's just certain actors that even if, like, no one's ever heard of a middle America, we're like, oh, they're, mm-hmm. they're A-list in our minds. Yeah. Right. I think it has a lot to do with, like, your gut. Your gut instinct. And it's so it's hard to explain. I have, like, two really, like, kind of cool stories, and I won't mention names, but, like, the one was, I, this girl came in and auditioned for us for, at the very beginning of Claws, and there's just something about her, and she didn't get the job, and then she would, like, but we kept remembering her, and she would come in, and she would kill it every time, there just was some either political reason, or it would get cut, or whatever, but she always came in and killed it, so I've known her for three years, and she wasn't with a high-level agent, like, but she was, she was working on good stuff, and, um, over the years, like, we just eventually, like, she's now, like, doing really well for herself. And it's just, like, I think when you have that that gut feeling about somebody where you just trust them, even if they're not getting the part, but you, you like, me personally, I see something in them. And then it's just really cool to watch them, like, progress to the point where then we finally did get to, we got a cast her in Pink Skies. And so it was, like, oh, yeah. three years later, I yeah. finally got a cast her in something. But she would always come in and read for me. She would come in and reread whenever, uh, whenever I asked her, like, because if, you know, somebody got hung up on what she was wearing or a certain line she said. The producer saw the tape and they were like, I don't Yeah, because a lot of times, so for her, it was for the show Claws. And so they were on set in New Orleans. So we would send them tapes. It was all oh, casting okay. out tapes. They weren't in the room. She's kind of like, she's ageless. So mm-hmm. I've read her for a 40-year-old and I've read her for a 25-year-old mm-hmm. role. And she's gotten in the top like three for both roles so when I gave her the note I was like can you look younger this time and she was like yeah and she came in and I was like holy yeah. I wish I could do that wow. and like take 10 years wow. off myself right you know um she just like peels her face yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but she's good and then even like when she came in to read for Pink Sky she was a completely different character like she just has that yeah. kind of chameleon ability about her mm-hmm. And she just never took it personally. She would always drive from wherever she was, coming and do it, like no complaining. And she she just loves acting that much that it's just so cool to like see it kind of come full circle. But it's like it, she, just because she didn't get it the first time she read for us for Claws, it's not like we wrote her off. Right. I was like, oh, she can't do it. This isn't her. Right. I have had actors be like, well, what did I do wrong? They read so much into it. And it could just be that we don't have our directors or producers in the room with that, or like they don't. They're not doing callbacks. And we just need to prove to them. And it, it tends to happen with maybe a little bit of newer directors or producers or somebody who's on the show for the first time. Nice um, and so they just kind of want to see just to give themselves their own comfort of like, I'm, I'm hiring this girl off of what I'm watching on the screen. I just need to know that she can do this turn right. Or, 
um, because they think it's a very pivotal moment or whatever. So um, my other really kind of cool story is on a show that I was doing, we had a really hard time finding a part. And so we had gone through a ton of actresses and I took a chance on somebody whose headshot just looked like kind of what the director and producer were wanting for the role. And I'd never met her before. I'd never done anything. And she came in and she read it wrong. But like, because I'd been reading it so much, I knew what they were looking for. I worked with her for 30 minutes in the room because I saw something. And I still, I saw 40 other people that day, but there was something in her. And now, and she ended up getting the role in the long run. So it's like, and she's killing it right now. And I, like, I just saw her in a movie on Netflix and I was like, oh my God, (laughs) like I was so proud. And it's just, it's really cool to like, and I think that just kind of, when you have those moments, it defines your taste because you're like, okay, clearly I can see what I like in this person. And then it just kind of like rounds out, you know, you just kind of, I think taste is almost like a gut reaction of like who you respond to and who you like for certain roles. And it's never to say like, just because you don't get a role, doesn't mean that we think we don't think you're good or sometimes you just never know. And here's the thing, like we love actors, you know, like that's, we really do. And I think sometimes I know it's intimidating coming into the room but we're all on the same team and we're trying to make good stuff and we, we want to make you look good and we want to, you know, hire people that we've tried to, you know, we've brought in a million times. Like, we'll keep bringing people back. But even, look, Jen and I disagree sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I say a lot of the time similar, but even, like, I won't say who, but you on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I liked the actress in the first season. She liked the actress in the second season, you know? And right. it was one of those things where I was like, oh, you can tell that person's acting. And she's like, oh, no, I thought that about the other one. You know, so sometimes it's, yeah. again, it is subjective. Um, but... No offense, Jenna, I like the first <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I love love! She's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're, okay, uh, we'll hopefully she's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. Are you um, Victoria? No? Okay. Again, it is subjective. Yeah, it sounds terrible, but like sometimes even for a TV show, the producers will say, I don't want a TV actor. And you still might hire someone with only television credits but they they don't like there's a weight to them or they're ground or like they yeah. they don't have that kind of networky feel. Mm-hmm. A good actor can obviously adapt and like know what you're going right. in for and you know be able to adjust. I haven't worked on that many network things. I would love to. CBS wants to hire me for pilot. <laughs> but when it comes to the taste, like there is just certain there's, there's actors that I've been reading for ten years. You know, yeah. and I just you know them and you trust them and you know we're constantly doing generals to meet new actors and you know that evolves. We're kind of generally on the same page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> do you think that like if an actor they're a good actor or like you like if they end up getting a job that's like not a great show or like you know but they're doing mm-hmm. it because it's a job and they mm-hmm. need a job or they need money or yeah. whatever like yeah and they're like three seasons on a do we hold that against them <laughs> yeah like do you hold that against like no. does that like make them lose weight I don't in, think so. in, in, in eyes if of, i know them before you know, that like yeah. i mean if that's their I mean, only work like, they have then it's kind of yeah. hard to like see them in a different light but if there's something where we have been reading them or we've read them before um we've seen them in a different show prior to that and it just yeah. happens to be this one thing like I wouldn't hold them against it. I just we wouldn't hold it against them because again, we can we always try to like vouch for people. Like they might be like, oh, but they were horrible, and that would be like, yeah, but did you see this other thing? Mm -hmm. Um, Or we can sometimes just say like, look, we've read them a lot, and they're I I guarantee you like they're strong. You know, so would I hold it against them? No. Again, ever needs to work. But like, there was an actor. Uh, when I was at Warner Brothers that we cast in the lead of this movie and I was like, this guy's a movie star. Right. And he's been on a network show for a long time. I think it's still on. He's he's not on any list now for movie star roles. He did kind of fall in that TV role. And again, I, it's not to say that I don't still believe in him, but it is a harder sell to producers. Like, he's not going to get a movie finance right now, even though he was the lead in a big blockbuster. An indie movie. Yes, he would like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's already yeah. funded. It doesn't yeah. matter. But for like an indie that needs financing, he can't get the financing. Yeah, but yeah. even but like Warner Brothers isn't going to call like him up higher. to do another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like now, again, right. that could change. Sometimes right. it just takes that one thing. There's an actor we were talking about yesterday that Jenna cast in a pilot years ago. And I was like, what happened to that guy? Because mm-hmm. he was again, he was like because he was like the num- He was like in the top five that you know because you know when pilot season yeah. starts yeah. and everyone kind of has their like upper echelon of actors that you know are available that you want to bring in and he was in that top and then I to this day I have no idea what he's doing right now but everyone else that I cast in the show it never went so um but everyone else I cast all our other series records are killing it right now they're all on tv there are two of them are leads of 
their own shows on major yeah. networks. And, and again, I wouldn't write the guy off. I'd probably want him to read or just to see him to be like, hey, where you been? What you been up to? Yeah. It's always an ever changing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys are mostly doing features mm-hmm. now. Yes, we've kind of we've done some digital series. Yeah. Um, but independent film is kind of the world that we're living in, living in, thriving in. <laughs> and so the people that you see for the leads of these movies when you release a breakdown for the lead of one of these movies yeah and you get like hundreds and hundreds of submissions for thousands and thousands, thousands <laughs> you know, i know I was, yeah, thousands and thousands okay, yeah okay. no is there some sort of credentials you're like looking for for the lead versus versus a supporting role versus like a obviously like a day player role like Again, how do you yeah. distinguish? Is it lists for the leads mostly, or is it a lot of reading? Especially like right now when we're trying to attach somebody to get it financed, it yeah. has to be a name that they can get the money from a financier, and yeah. so you have to have some kind of notability, you know, right, some yeah. kind of resume. Yeah. Yeah. After that, like so, like Pink Skies was financed when we came on, yeah. and they so had their lead. Yeah. yeah, and so those other leads, it kind of depends, and it really it depends on the creative team because like some directors come in and are like. I want Ben Affleck and I will not settle for less. Like, right. <laughs> and so you go to that level. Whether, and it's, that, whether it's creatively right or not. Yeah. Right. But if it gets their movie made, great. that's who they want. And but, so it is this, we have to play that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say Pink Skies is a little bit more, like it was a first time director. She was and a was, director. So she her, was yeah. a lot more open to newer actors. Jesse Barden was already attached. So yeah. we did have the freedom. We did read, except for the parents, pretty much every role. Mm-hmm. Um, which and we fun. brought in people who had a few credits, up to people who yeah. have been on, who've been series regulars, who have been leads of films on their own right, or yeah. who have been in Oscar movies. So yeah. I mean, we really yeah. ran the gamut on that one, which yeah. was really fun for us. So then, when you're bringing in people, it's it's more about are they right for the part mm-hmm. in that in that kind of situation? Yes, we kind of first go to the people we've worked with before, the people we've read before right. that we believe in, and again, mm-hmm. the nice thing about having a partnership is. I might not know some of the people she knows. And, exactly. Yeah. And so I might go, oh, I love this person. And yeah. Jen's like, oh, you know, or vice versa. I'll be like, I've never heard of them. Right, right, right. Um, we so did that quite a bit at the beginning, yeah. which was really cool. Because, again, like, we yeah. come from completely separate casting offices. Yeah. And right. um, people do tend to, like, go in their circles. Like, you keep, you bring yeah. in the people you know, the ones you've worked with. So yeah. coming in and, like, getting to meet all her actors that yeah. she loves. And I was like, I have no idea who this yeah. is. And nine times out of ten, we're like, oh, that person's really good. Like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. even if they don't get the job, we're yeah. like, oh, wow, they were yeah, great. I know. And then Mm-hmm. And then like doubling bring, your role next yeah. totally. and then we bring yeah. them in on the next project right um we kind of got into this phase where we were doing it was like teens and parents like there was yeah. no 20s 30s you know yeah. and there was a couple months stretch where we were kind of doing that and so obviously for teens it's easier you know because there's not um as many that like mean something in terms yeah. of mm-hmm. like foreign value at that in that age range so that was fun because we did get to read more people have more of a hey have you heard this person they were you know yeah. on this show yeah. or this movie you might have heard of and um but when it comes to like Jen was saying like just the truly like attaching like no mm-hmm. one's attached movies yeah. not really financed they say it is but yeah. <laughs> yeah um then it's like they want a list mm-hmm. it yeah. was cool that we did a like a million dollar film last summer and there's a very good agent in town. She called me, and I have a very long-standing relationship with her. And she said, like, she knew we were at, we were casting Pink Skies, and she was like, I just signed this kid. Mm-hmm. You need to know him. He's amazing. All agents say that, but, like, you trust. I trusted her so much. Mm-hmm. And she's always done very good by me. And so I was like, okay. And she was like, I want you to read for him, even though I know he has no shot at this role. Because we knew we had to go a different direction. And I said, okay, if you want me to know him, we'll bring him in. Mm-hmm. He came in, almost convinced our director to change the role for him. But in the end, it still went a different oh, direction. Wow. But That's all this crazy. to say, she put him on our radar. And then this kid just graduated college, no credits. Mm-hmm. Our very, that, so when we got our $1 million indie, mm-hmm. we were casting the leads. And since it was already financed, we didn't have to worry about like, mm-hmm. of course, he wanted some name. like So we got Christopher Lloyd and... Um, Joy Lauren Adams and so we got some like good names in there yep. but they didn't really care they just wanted good raw talent and he ended up getting the lead of the film yeah wow and it's like his amazing. first credit yeah That's and awesome. so you just never know no like, and his it's a great story too because his first audition I don't think I can stress enough that it was like you know two or three pages like a couple lines like it, mm-hmm. this was not like a juicy five you know five page thing. thing and he really impressed us uh, off this very small read uh, how and, by being good. And, but like, <laughs> what, just, like what, what? He, I think, to be honest, I think a lot of the actors that came in for that role, and again, it was written a certain way, and I think a lot of them tended to kind of, they made some similar choices, if you will, mm-hmm. um, and it was coming across one way, and then he played it a little differently, and he mm-hmm. kind of had this, like, 
hipster vibe to him that worked mm-hmm. for the scene. It was um, very cool and casual because it was like playing the husband of somebody who was really cool and casual and so they're like and everyone just came in and played it like a like a husband like they're just because there's not a lot on the page to go from so it's they, yeah. they don't they didn't read a lot into who they were playing opposite against so our director was like for them to make sense as a couple right. I think they need to live in the same universe of like being cool or their coolness or their right. their hipsterness level or he, whatever he, he made just some, did it. he made a bolt he made a choice he made something out of nothing and he did it very subtly mm-hmm. um, that we remembered his audition so that when we were going through the breakdown for this, you know, our lead had, we had a lead, it, it, long story short, it didn't work out. And so Jen's like, oh yeah. And she sees him and she's like, and so we brought him straight to the director and he blew okay. everyone out of the water. Like, and I he, can't trust this that they were completely different compl- characters. Like the one from Pink Skies to what he's the lead in in this movie are completely separate. Like they're not even close to being similar to yeah. each other. So that's interesting. So like let me ask you this because like so when you are going to breakdowns and you mm-hmm. see actors that you know and you mm-hmm. bring you bring them in before you kind of like have a idea of their mm-hmm. scent, their like general essence and like they kind mm-hmm. of play like this kind of role. Yeah. And maybe they're the role is completely different from them. What mm-hmm. makes you bring someone in for something that, like, in my experience, I usually get called in for very similar things, mm-hmm. but I could probably mm-hmm. play the other thing. I just yeah. have never been in for the other thing because mm-hmm. people see me see a certain way. Yeah. So, like, what makes you take a chance to see somebody in a different light mm-hmm. uh, versus, like, kind of keeping them in their kind of, like, where you know they're strong and yeah. you've seen them do that multiple times, yeah. that kind of way? Some well. of it is the body of work. You know, for example, we went to an independent film last night and uh, one of the actresses who's on one of my favorite Netflix shows had this small part in an indie film and really changed the way I thought about her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, not that I didn't think she could do it, I just hadn't seen it. And so she, she was my favorite part of the movie and she really stood out. Um, so sometimes it's that. We watch right. a ton of, like it's our homework to, do, right. <laughs> to watch a lot of TV and film. It's, cool homework. <laughs> but when it's uh, someone who's more up and coming, just from reading them a lot, mm-hmm. you know, like... I think there's, like, certain things of, like, if you can tell they have some comedic timing, even, at, like, you know, then you can, like, try them out for more comedy or yeah. there's something... I don't know. Again, it's a lot of instinct of, like... And we choose wrong sometimes, too. I mean, you think you you think you know somebody and you're like, oh, they'd be great for this. They come in and it's just, like, not a right fit. And you're just right. like, oh, well, at least we tried, you know? Right. But that so, doesn't knock them from being... No, like, never. It's just like... No. They just weren't right for that. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just kind of, I don't know. It's like a case by case basis. What if say. the first time you read somebody they're bad? Does that like put an, a knock on them? Like. And I don't know them from anything. Yeah, else. you don't know them from anything else. Like if it's memorably bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But sometimes they just come in and they read it wrong, or like you, you just. Yeah. If it's someone that we don't, off. we honestly we don't know them. We don't know their agent. Like we've just randomly selected them, and they come in and they're. And sometimes it's not even that they're bad. Sometimes it's honestly just that they're not memorable. Mm-hmm. And so if it doesn't make an impression on me, you yeah. know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I might bring them in again because I like their headshot. Mm-hmm. But then right. I, like, sometimes I can't remember whether I like them or not. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes we bring people in off their headshot and they don't look anything like it. And it's like, well, I can't use it for this role because it's like, speci- right. it's like yeah. something physically specific about it that they have in the headshot that then yeah. they walk in and they don't have. And you're just like, well, well that, just that's not going to work. Biggest pet peeve. That is my biggest like, pet peeve. Look like your headshot. Yeah. Oh, good to know. I do hold don't, it against don't actors piss her off. <laughs> who don't look like their headshots. Yeah. Ooh. I just called an actor out about it the other week. <laughs> look like your headshot. Yeah. <laughs>